Now in this last video, I'm gonna be showing you how I weave in my ends. So I have a bunch of ends on my work, especially in a completed scarf. This one was just my sample. I have a cast on, a cast off, anywhere I switched balls of yarn. So here's one of those. And then also, if you switched colors, there's those ends as well. So I'm gonna go through how to weave in each one of those ends in that exact order. And if you're just looking for one in particular, along the bottom of this video, there'll be different chapters. So you can look for just the portion you're looking for. First up, starting with the cast on, all I have in front of me right now is a plastic tapestry needle. So you can see it's nice and bendy. And then a set of scissors. And I'm gonna take this cast on tail and I'm gonna thread it onto my tapestry needle. Now what I wanna do, and it doesn't actually matter which side of your work you're on, it's just gonna depend which way you weave it in. So I'm gonna start with the front side up and I'm gonna look just above where this piece of yarn is coming out. So it's coming out almost like the very bottom right corner. So I'm gonna look just above that. And now you can see there's a series of kind of what looks like a smile or a U shape, and then an upside down U shape. A loop, another loop, and it keeps on alternating back and forth. So an easy way to weave in an end is to pick one of those and follow along along the loops. So first, I'm gonna go up through this first U shape. Then I'm gonna go down through the next one. Move over a little bit, go up through the next one. Then I'm gonna go down through the next one. And as I'm going along, I'm not pulling the yarn too, too tight because basically I wanna keep it looking like what it looked like before. So if I pull it too tight, all the stitches will tend to kind of group together. So I wanna pull it, again, you'll hear me say like snug, but not too, too tight. And I'm just gonna go for a few inches here or an inch or so, probably almost at an inch and a half now. When I'm done, I stretch out my work again, just to make sure it's not too tight. And now I'm gonna cut this yarn tail and I cut it very close to where my work is just so it's less visible. So you can see it a bit right there, but it blends in really nicely. Now next up for my cast off tail, I'm gonna do the exact same steps. So I'm gonna thread my tapestry needle And now you'll notice I'm going in the opposite direction. But again, I'm just gonna look for a series of loops and start following them along. So I go up one, down the next. Now, once I've gone over a little ways, I'm gonna stretch out my work and then I'm gonna cut my yarn. So now next up, let's look at one of the locations where we had switched balls of yarn. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna to wanna to make sure both of your tails are on the same side of your work. If they aren't, and maybe one is coming out the opposite side. So if you had a situation like this where one was on the front, one was on the back, you just wanna move them both to being on the same side. And usually it's easiest if they're both on the back side of your work. So where all the pearl bumps are, if you have a right and a wrong side. Now, if your fabric is symmetric, like this one down here at the bottom, it doesn't matter. But something up here, like this stockinette stitch, where there is a front side and a back side, it's best to move them both to the back side. So, 
I'm just gonna thread it through there again. If it's easy, easy to thread through the hole that forms when you join a new ball, you can just use your tapestry needle as well and just thread it from one side to the other. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie a knot. Some people prefer not to tie knots, but I do find they stay relatively hidden and they don't really mess up the appearance of the work at all, and it's a bit more secure. So I'm just gonna tie a simple knot here, and I do it twice, just as if I was tying my shoes. And I do pull that fairly snug, and if you look at the other side of my work, you can't tell at all where that knot is. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weave in each one of these ends in opposite direction. So this end is going more towards the right, so I'm gonna weave this one in to the right using my tapestry needle. And just like I did down below, I'm just gonna loop up through one, down through the next. Let's go with this one. Up, go over one, down the next. Over one, up, and then down. I go for about an inch or so. When I'm all done, I'm gonna stretch out my work and then I'm gonna cut that yarn tail. Now again, repeat on the opposite side, just going the other direction. And over here, I don't have much room. So what I'm gonna do, since I don't have much room to loop it in, is I'm gonna move down a row and then just go in the opposite direction. So move over towards the right. Just to make sure I weave it in for at least an inch or two. Okay, so that looks great. Now again, stretch out my work, cut my yarn. Now this is the back side, so if you are really looking for it, you can probably tell where it is. So it's actually just part of the weaving in. My little end is over here for one of them, and then my other one is right there. So they stay really hidden. And this is the front side of my work. You can't really tell at all where I just wove that in. Last up, we have the option if you switch colors. So this can be a bit tricky because it's along the edge. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over to the back side of my work. And if your work doesn't have a back side, then it doesn't matter which side you're looking at. This one does have a back side just because of the stockinette portion. So again, this is the front of my work. All the pearl bumps is the back of my work. So I'm gonna have all those pearl bumps facing up. And now the first thing I'm gonna do is I am gonna tie a knot. So I'm gonna tie a double knot. And the reason I tie a double knot is because I want the gray yarn to end up over here on the left side, up where it originally started, and I want this cream color yarn to end up back with the cream color yarn. And now I'm gonna pick either color I wanna start with, and I'm gonna weave it in, essentially the row just below where I switched, and then the gray color, I'm gonna weave in the row just above where I switched. So going both in the same direction, but different rows. The reason you wouldn't wanna weave them both into the same row is that it can become a bit bulky if you do that. And then also, you may be able to see it from the other side if you try to weave in like the gray yarn down here in the white portion. I just finished the white one. I'm gonna stretch it out, cut the yarn. Then repeat for the gray.
stretch it out a bit, and then cut my yarn. So there is it from the back, and then from the front. One thing I wanted to mention here at the end too is what should you do if you're weaving into a ribbing pattern or something like all the way up here at the top, the seed stitch pattern. So showing you real quick what I would do if I was weaving into ribbing. So let's say my yarn tail was right here. I would still tie my double knot with the two ends. And then the easiest way to weave in to ribbing and this is what I do for socks, is I just pick one of these columns of knit stitches and I just follow along with each one of the loops. So instead of weaving into the side, I go upwards and I just take my yarn and wrap it through each one. Once I get a little ways up, then I would cut my yarn. And it looks really obvious because it's white yarn, but you can kind of tell how if this was the bluish color that I have here, that would be completely woven in and you wouldn't be able to tell where it was.